Hey guys, I decided to revisit the Bluetooth cassette idea. A while back, probably a year or so ago, I made a Bluetooth cassette using a Bluetooth headset. So it was only mono, and unless you had specialized software on your phone, you couldn't really play music to the device. So what I did was I went to Best Buy and I bought some Bluetooth modules. This one cost me $30. It's a nice small form factor. And this one cost me $15. Now it's a bit bigger, I'm hoping once I open it, most of that bulk is going to be a speaker because this has a speaker inside of it. This one does not, it just outputs uh, a signal level to align in on your computer or something similar to that. So it's a pretty low signal, I'm not sure if it's capable of driving high enough to power the magnetics inside here, but we'll find out. So I first attempted to use the $15 Bluetooth module. I ended up cutting up the circuit board and just using small portions of the circuit board in order to attempt to make something that would be a suitable form factor to fit inside the cassette. And after doing all that, mounting the amplifier, all that good stuff, I ended up getting a pretty noisy signal out of it. You can probably hear that quite annoying. So that's really unacceptable. Alright, now let's just move on to this guy. It should be easy to do. So it's quite a simple module. It has a power button, a power connector, so what you would charge via USB, and obviously the audio out. So just the three things going on there. Now it also has an LED, turns red when it's charging, and flashes blue when it's on. I'll just demonstrate the on state. So, there you can see, it's on. Alright, now let's turn it off and open it up. Okay, very nice. It has a small circuit board and a battery, so that should have no issue fitting inside the cassette. and avoiding contact with the uh, rotors that come up through those holes. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the audio out cable here and replace it with a socket so I can just use the cassette and just plug this cassette right into this module, put it in my car and see if it'll work prior to actually taking this and mounting it inside a cassette. All right, so I removed all three wires. Thankfully, they're labeled, otherwise I wouldn't have known which was which. So here we have ground, G, right, R, left, L. So hopefully you can see that. All right, now I'm just gonna solder, uh, let's see, I have a socket somewhere. Yeah, I'll just take this socket and solder some wires to it. Should work fine. All right, so I just quickly soldered that on there. So here we have the left, right, and ground. Going here. Not sure if this is left or this is left, but it should work. It'll just be swap polarity. Uh, so let's go in my car and see if this works. So here's the cassette, and I'll just plug it in to the socket here. Turn this guy on. So now it's on. Put the cassette in. My phone is now connected to that device there. And let's see how it sounds. This sounds quite good, actually. So, uh, we've determined that that will work. Now I just have to uh, figure out a way of fitting it inside the cassette. All right, let's do that. Now I'm just gonna open this up and see if we can fit it inside. Hmm. 
Okay. Now, I'm not sure how many gears I actually need to keep in there, or if I need to keep any at all. I'm not really sure why they're there. I'm going to try just leaving them all out. All right, I'm going to mount the printed circuit board and battery on this side, since this is the side of the cassette, which is facing me when it's inserted into my uh, car's cassette player. And the reason I want this facing out this way is because that's where the power connects, and that's where the power button is. So I want those to be as accessible as possible. Now, I did clip out some uh, pieces of plastic already that are just there for structural integrity of the cassette, but since these will be there to take the place, it should be pretty secure after the fact. All right, now I'm going to be uh, cutting a notch or drilling a hole into this plastic here so I have access to the power socket and to the power button. Here's what I have so far. I've notched out the two sections there, one for the power, one for the reset button. I'm gonna have to take a little off the top as well so that it will lock together. And using my old notch as a reference, I can just cut up a little bit in order to get that power socket accessible. Now that it's all notched out, I can uh, remove the adhesive on the back here and paste it down. That was there when I got it, so that's quite convenient. Don't know why they didn't utilize it. Perhaps if you bought one it would not It would be utilized and you would just have to use hot glue instead, but uh, yeah. And in addition to that, I will use hot glue. It's just for temporary placement. Because I need to get access to these wires here. Uh, where the uh, socket was soldered in. Alright, I removed the magnetic head from the cassette. I'll show you how to put it back in. It has some springs and such, which are quite annoying. But anyway, uh, I've determined the pinout. So this red one here is this point, which is the left. The blue wire is the center one here, which is the right, and the copper wire is ground. So, now I'm going to remove these because it's kind of annoying to solder enameled wire. And I'm going to replace it with, uh, probably phone cable. I decided at some point I should show you how I'm desoldering these cables. I'm using solder wick, and I have my iron set at 700 degrees Fahrenheit. So, just rest the solder wick on there, have a clean tip, and rest it on the solder wick, which is above the wire you want to remove. Hold for a bit, and it'll come up. And then I just clip off the part that has the solder on it. Clean the tip, and repeat the process. Be mindful of the resistors on here because those will come up if you rest the iron on them. So that's that. Instead of using phone cable, I'm using USB cable. It was just a little thinner than the phone cable, so I went with that instead. And I'm going to tin the wire first, so just melt some solder onto it. If the solder wants to stay in place, that is. Okay. Now this is black, so I'm going to use it for the ground connection. Okay. After tinning, you may want to clip off some of the wire because the plastic will melt a little bit and leave you with a longer wire exposed than you want. So 
you may want to clip it. Uh, and this is the white, so it'll be the right. And I need to add a little bit of solder to that pad. Okay, that's good. And the last one is a red wire for the left. And I'm going to need to add a little bit of solder to this pad as well. wasn't so good but it'll work all right now I just need to solder the other side of these wires to the circuit board <coughs> and as for putting on these uh, little plastic springs here just insert it so the spring is facing this side and put it down like so and now they're both locked in and now I will very carefully flip this up and over. I still need to solder or uh, hot glue some things down. I just want to test it first before I completely commit. Well, I made two unfortunate discoveries. One, the gears are very important inside the cassette. And the other unfortunate thing I discovered was my car's cassette player broke. It no longer takes in the cassette. Something with the motors just burned out or something like that. I'll demonstrate what happened. And uh, yeah, and I'll describe why the gears are important. Alrighty. And the purpose of the gears is to prevent the cassette from going in either direction. So with this, it plays along just fine. But, if it were to go the other way, it locks up. This little gear here locks up against the plastic here. And the reason for that is because cassettes are double-sided. And I'll just get out my whiteboard and show you what I mean by that. Alright, this is your traditional cassette tape. On the bottom we have side A, and on the top we have side B. Side A goes this direction, side B goes that direction. So when you flip the cassette, or in this case, just flip the whiteboard, you can see side B is now going that way, and side A is on the top. And with the magnetics of the cassette I have, there's only data on the bottom. There's nothing on the top. So if the reader was trying to read side B, there wouldn't be anything there to read, so the cassette prevents it from going in the side B direction. The cassette player on my car's stereo stopped working, so I pulled the stereo out of my car and connected 12 volts to it. And if I try to put a cassette in, this is what happens. So there's something wrong with the motor or something along those lines. All right, so I installed the gears on this side so the cassette can only play in one direction now. So if I try playing in this direction, it doesn't play. And if I try playing in this direction, it does play. And this is connected to the line in on my computer. And the quality could be better, and I'm blaming the uh, cassette for the low quality, or the cassette player, rather. And in addition to having the magnetics play the music, I also added a headphone jack, so that'll play the music as well. Okay. And, yeah, so there's the power button. 
and the charger. So if I want to charge it, I just plug that in. And the nice thing about this is it can play while it's charging. So there we go. Bluetooth version number two. And yeah, it's kind of useless to me now because this is broken. It's unfortunate. So uh, yeah. I guess a future video will be me installing a Bluetooth module into this and hopefully getting it to work. Alright guys, thanks for watching.